How's it going everybody? I'm Mecca here and uh, I want to take some time to talk about how to make your first $1,000 with Kindle Publishing in 2018. Man, has Kindle Publishing changed a lot over the last 24, even the last 12 months since I started publishing. We've seen it go from people coming into the business and making $10,000 a month in as little as four to five months in from those exact same people having their income drop off to only a couple thousand dollars a month because Amazon made some changes, got smarter, and well, they were really only using short-term tactics. I love, 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 love where Kindle Publishing is headed in 2018, 2019, and beyond because it's headed back to its core. It's headed back to where you have to really get down and dirty and learn how to build a proper brand for yourself in order to have some long-term sustainable income. And that is what is key. From the beginning, I've wanted to make sure I've built up my passive income with Kindle Publishing the right way and built it up so I don't have to really worry about it and it's always going to be there. So I want to share a few of my tips on what you can do going forward to make your first thousand dollars with Kindle Publishing in 2018. So here we go. So the very first one is going to be building a brand. Now, you, you, you're probably watching lots of videos on Kindle and uh, it makes sense, but you want to focus in on the ones that talk about building a specific brand around your books. Now that does not mean having to take your books off of Amazon and uh, start a Shopify store like I might have talked about what I've done or anything like that. It just talks about picking one niche and diving deep into that niche. See, when you pick one niche to dive into, you're able to connect with your readers on a deeper level, build a loyal following who will continue to support you by buying more and more books from you, but also it helps establish your credibility and your authority on Amazon. This is what I learned from the very get-go. I found a niche that I really enjoyed. I started publishing books, it started gaining traction, and then I just didn't really focus on any other niches. I dove deep into this one, and I have a loyal fan base now, and uh, they tell me what books to write. I don't bother with keyword research anymore. I don't need to. I just email them out, say, hey, what are the next topics you all wanna hear about? I do some polls on social media. I publish the books and they end up ranking on Amazon and I sell enough of them to get by. And you can only do that when you've established a brand and established an authority. When you type in my keyword, 70% of the first page results are all my books. 70% are all my books, 80% of the top five are mine. That is a brand. That is a brand. So doing that, it really helps your book stand out and tells Amazon that you're serious. And in turn, it looks like nobody can prove it for sure, but it looks like they do end up favoring you and just keep pushing your books to the front of the page, so to speak. The second thing is building an email list. Now, if you are not building an email list, why? You gotta build an email list. You have to build an email list, you have to. If you want to be in this business, no, not even if you wanna be in this business, if you wanna have an income longer than six months in this business, you have to have an email list. This is something that's free, it's something that's simple, and it's something that's 110% necessary in this day and age. Building an email list allows you to connect with your readers, uh, get ideas for new books, sell more books, Right, we, I, I'm filming this on, on the Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend. You know, it's been sending out multiple emails to my list. Buy my books here, buy them here. Even if you, know, you, you, you make sales on Amazon by dropping your price and promote that to your people. Let them know where to buy your books. You can only do that if you're building an email list. An email list, it is one of the most it's probably the most essential tool you can have when you're making any sort of money online. So all serious internet marketers 
talk about building an email list, right? There's that saying, the money's in the list. They say that because it's true. If you want to be serious about kind of publishing, you have to make sure you're building an email list from day one. One of the things I always preach to my students is before you launch your book, make sure your entire email list sequence is set up. You don't want to miss out on one subscriber. That's how important it is. All right, the third thing, more of a mindset, but it's understand you're in it for the long game. You're in it for the long game. Um, the money won't come quick, most likely. Now, there are some people who, who really make their first thousand within the first 30, 60, or, or 90 days. Now, rare cases, rare cases, right? Myself, it took me, if I can remember, it took me about four months, four months or so, I think, four or five months. I can't remember the exact thing. But uh, I've had many students who, who, who hit that much faster. I've also had students who took, you know, seven, eight months to, to figure it out to making their first thousand dollar, to having their first thousand dollar month. But have that long-term mentality that you're not looking for the get rich quick thing. You're looking for something that you're gonna be able to build up the right way. It will take a bit of time and effort. But once it's built top, you don't have to worry about it. And it comes in every single month like clockwork. I just noticed you can't see my hand. Every single month like clockwork. And um, that is so key, but you have to have the right mentality. And that's the long-term thinking that you're in this for, for the long. I, when I say long-term, do I mean like two, three, four years? No, 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 no. I mean like commit to it for at least a year. Commit to it for a year to actually figure it out and get it going so you can see the potential that uh, the Kindle Publishing has. Um, be aware of upfront costs. That's the next thing, right? Hey, if you're going the route that I went and you're going to outsource everything, uh, there's the costs that are associated with that, right? A book is going to run you anywhere from two to three hundred dollars. Right, uh, then, you know, if you're gonna spend any money on ads, you don't have to by any means, but uh, it does help make life a little easier. You know, there's gonna be some upfront ad costs. Um, but just understand that uh, you're gonna, it's a business. Money goes out and goes out and goes out before it comes in, right? So you, you just wanna make sure that you understand that because I've seen a lot of people, they kind of get into it and they're like, oh, I'm spending all this money, I'm not getting a return. It's like, well, yeah, you've been in it for like, you know, three weeks. What are you expecting, magic? No, if it was that easy, everybody would, do be, everybody would be doing it. The next point is, is ignore the large income claims that you might be seeing online. So much has changed, like I talked about in the beginning. So much has changed in the industry that Going after a $10,000 a month with Kindle Publishing, it's not the same anymore. That has changed, that, that was two, three years ago. It was so much easier to do that using certain loopholes and, and black hat methods and things like that. This day and age, right, to build a brand and do it the right way, you know, a consistent six to $7,000 a month business with Kindle, is much more realistic. And besides, in my opinion, unless you wanna make Kindle Publishing your full-time gig and uh, you wanna be one of those people that uh, are, are making 30, 40, $50,000 a month with Kindle Publishing, you know, be happy with learning how to scale your business to six or seven grand a month with Kindle and then start using that money for investments or, or other businesses that you might wanna get into that you'll learn about as you go through this whole self-publishing industry wheel type of thing. This is the last point is whatever you're doing, make sure you're watching the most relevant content out there. There's so much content on YouTube that is no longer relevant in this day and age and is no longer relevant for, for one main reason most of the people ended up moving on to something else. And so their old videos are still there, but it's all outdated and it, it, there are their tactics that don't work anymore, this and that. Make sure you're following people, whether it's myself or somebody else, it's totally cool. Um, but just make sure you're following people that are, are producing videos 
um, you know, in this day and age that have been there for the, you know, within the last six to eight months, they've been producing a regular amount of videos um, or, or they have blog posts, etc. But the number one thing you want to make sure is that they're actually still publishing books. Um, one of the things that has really made my self-publishing blueprints stand out this year is I'm the only person, only person, when you take a look at the top course creators, that is actually still publishing books every single month. That forces me to keep my information and everything as relevant and up to date as possible, because I'm still in it. I'm st like it's, I, I've built my brand and uh, I still am. I have coming out this week. Another one will be ready in about two and a half weeks. Um, published uh, another one. When did that go out? About two weeks ago. I'm still actively publishing books. So it forces me to keep my videos like on YouTube, like this one, extremely relevant because I know the changes that are happening. Hell, if you even go back to some of my videos beginning of the year and then you watch some this at this time, it's November now, you'll see messages have changed, right? Some of the things that I was promoting earlier, they've changed because Amazon changed. So you had to, so I had to make some adjustments and those type of things I don't practice or do anymore. So I'd say, Hey, no, I'm doing things this way now. So it changes. The internet changes so much and so often that people who aren't actually active in it, they become old and irrelevant really, really quick. Let's just say it that way. But hey, if you got any questions, um, I got a free guide. I ain't going to promote my course to you today. You, you can buy it if you want, but there's a f link in the first, the first, uh, the link you're going to see. It's my five step blueprint, the five step blueprint to making your first thousand dollars online. You can download that for free. You just enter your email and uh, you can download that for free. And this will really walk you through in a bit more detail and exactly what are some of the mechanics you know, mechanical, technical things that you need to do to make your first thousand dollars online. I'm going to be following up with the second part to this video that's going to dive into some more technical aspects. But right now, I just wanted to take some time for this video to kind of give you a more overview of what it's going to take to make your first thousand dollar month with Kindle Publishing in 2018. Hey, as always, everybody, I'm a Mecca. If you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing and hit the bell so you get notifications whenever I do a live stream with Q&A. Until next time, take care.